This is Mile High. Do I want to tell the story or do I want to show the mess? You've got a lot of work to do between Mile High. The time has come where we can know we have a responsibility, an ethical and moral responsibility. We have to do it better in order to move people along. Up, down, inside out. If you get your mind right, it is not. It is a receiver of thought. Because love is my first technique. It's now time for the show. Welcome to the Mile High Podcast. This is your host, Dr. Dan Rolls. Thank you for joining us. And whatever altitude you're joining us from uh, and whatever channel, make sure you hit subscribe, whether it's on um, Apple Podcasts or iTunes, or if it's on uh, Spotify, make sure you hit subscribe so you never miss any Mile High tick. And also, we know you don't want to miss being at Mile High Live. So again, traveling to altitude, 5,280 feet, make sure to mark in your calendar and actually hit register at riseuptomilehigh.com to reserve your seats. We'll be announcing the speakers and themes really soon, and it's going to be pretty darn exciting. Um, Our guest today, I'm so thrilled, is Dr. Jen Santos, who was actually part of our panel this past uh, year, our pediatric panel, which was just phenomenal. We had such great feedback and reviews about it. And I'm sure we'll talk about this. She comes from a family of chiropractors, uh, graduated from Life West in 2013. And she now has her and her husband have three locations and 16 chiropractors. Wow. Um, and she's taught at Life West for seven years and has started teaching for the ICPA and also is one of the ICPA instructors who teaches the Webster technique. Thank you for joining us today, Dr. Jen Santos. Thank you for having me. So first of all, um, let's talk about, the, get, let people get to know you a little bit personally. However, you just told me off, of, <laughs> off, off camera about, you know, your family being chiropractors and some really interesting story about that. So let's start with that because it's kind of exciting. So how many chiropractors are you and your family? Um, there's four of us, my dad, my husband, my brother, and myself. Wow. So that's ex- excellent and extraordinary. I love speaking to chiropractic families. I think, how many do I have? I have myself, my wife, my parents, and my wife, uh, brother. So I beat you out by one. So there's a- <laughs> Okay. And All my right. son's going to chiropractic school, so there'll be six. However, yeah. you beat us out because um, he's a chairman right now. So, um, but you actually be, you know, have a family line of chiropractors, which is really very exciting. Uh, can you share that with our audience? Yeah. So when we were in, um, chiropractic college, we actually started off at Sherman. We were there for six quarters and then moved back home to life West. And so when we started at Sherman, we were in philosophy class and we were reading Joe Strauss's refined by fire. And, he was bringing up the idea that chiropractic um, you know, spinal manipulative therapy is not new to chiropractic, right? And that there's been a long history of people doing forms of, you know, spinal manipulative therapy. And one of the things he brought up was in like colonial times of the United States, there was a family that were called bone setters and they would go up and down the East coast of the, you know, different colonies and would basically like perform these, um, you know, quasi adjustments and people would heal. And we were reading about this whole family and they were called the sweet family bone setters. And, you know, everybody in my class knew that my maiden name was sweet And so we were like, I wonder if, you know, I'm somehow related to these people. And so that night I called my uncle and my uncle was like, yeah, actually that's your great, 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 great grandfather and your great, 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 great great uncle. And so we went back all the way because he was very into genealogy and studying about our family history. And so we were able to find it um, through there, which was kind of fun. That is kind of fun. I, I think that's really, really, really cool. And, um, uh, Refined by Fire is one of my favorite Strauss books. So um, I, I didn't even know that you read that as part of class at Sherman. That's very, that's also very cool. Yeah. So now um, you, what, when, tell, tell us a little bit about how you found your way to chiropractic. Was it through your dad or 
or, or was it through your husband or how did you end up deciding to go down the chiropractic path? Yeah. So I grew up in a chiropractic family and what I always joke about with chiropractic kids is we like, we vibrate at a little bit of a different frequency, right? Um, we're just a little odd. Um, we had, you know, organic food. Before I never noticed that thing. before. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, we, um, we were mostly homeschooled, um, but I did go to school for a few years and, um, you know, my dad was always kind of of the philosophy that like your body is not sick, it's adapting. And so there would be things, you know, I would wake up and like, oh, I'm too sick to go to school. And he'd be like, okay, tell me what's going on. And I would throw up or whatever. And he'd be like, see, you're expressing intelligence. This is great. And whereas most of my friends were like, no, that means you're sick. Um, <laughs> and so um, I really watched his practice. We grew up in his practice. We homeschooled in the back of his office. Um, I'm a family of five kids and my mom was his, um, primary like, uh, chiropractic assistant. And, uh, so we kind of grew up in his practice and we got to see the miracles of chiropractic every day. But with that, we also got to see how difficult running a practice can be. And so, when I got into uh, high school and uh, college, I really didn't want to own my own business. I wanted to, you know, go to work, get a paycheck, go home. And, you know, uh, and then my husband had a career in computer science and I actually started pursuing law enforcement. And so was trying to decide whether to do enforcement or like, um, like attorney law stuff. And was kind of going down that and got about halfway through school and realized that pretty much um, I started interning at the sheriff's department and pretty much we were meeting people on the worst days of their lives. Mm. And um, it was, you know, nobody really wants to meet face to face with police officers and um, have interactions with them. And um, we were just meeting people on the worst days of their lives. And we weren't like, helping people in the same way that I really had a heart to like help people. So um, I got about halfway through school and realized, all right, maybe I'll go into law and do, you know, pro bono work or, you know, how, however that could like help people and started, you know, kind of more focusing my, my majors on that. And just the more I got into it, the more I was like, this is very arbitrary. It's very, um, our system is a little wonky and I don't really want to really? have this. <laughs> um, and so, and it was still like, nobody goes to court being like, yay, this is the happiest day of my life, you know? Um, and so, I, I, so my husband actually at that time started working in my dad's office um, to help with, they had just gotten a new computer software program and my husband was in computers. So he was going after work and helping set up computers and um, all of that. And my husband had been under chiropractic care since he was like 12. We've known mm -hmm. each other our whole lives. Um, and he started to see like basically the miracles of chiropractic during that little one hour shift. And so he then started kind of working for my dad. And then he went to a seminar where Reggie Gold spoke. And my husband, ah. was like, my husband was like, I love chiropractic. Like I want to be a chiropractor. And I was like, no, you, you don't. I'm like, it's really hard. The business aspect, like, is really hard. My dad was, um, he was an amazing chiropractor, but he had a very big practice of like work comp and PI. Ah. Um, and so it was kind of soul sucking and then, and, and um, and it was hard. Um, uh, but he was a chiropractor, I mean, in the Mercedes eighties. So he was doing very well. Um, and my husband was like, no, I want to be a chiropractor. I'm going to, I'm going to check it out. And I was like, okay, well, let's go check out Life West. Um, <laughs> and we went down to Life West to an open house and I heard um, Jerry Klum tell his chiropractic story. And he has a chiropractic story about how he was first taken to a chiropractor when chiropractic was illegal. Um, he had an eye problem and started going to the chiropractor and the medical doctor was like, 
it's a miracle it's healed, you know? And, mm. um, and the, the medical doctor said, what have you been doing? And the dad said, we took him to a chiropractor and he looked at his dad and he's like, I wouldn't take my dog to a chiropractor. And it was the first time in my life. I mean, I think I was 22 or 23 at the time. And it was the first time in my life that I realized that not every man, woman, and child was already under chiropractic care. Uh, <laughs> um, you know, because it's it a just, big realization. Right. And it was just a it was just a, a thing in my life where I had grown up with it so consistently. And, you know, all of my friends got adjusted because my dad would adjust them. And, um, and so it was, it was a big realization. And so on the way home, I was like, well, you know, so from that moment, I was like, you know, it really makes sense to adjust pregnant people and children, because that's kind of like the start of life. Right. And so we get in the car and we're driving home. And I say to my husband, you know, I want to, I want to do it too. I'm going to become a chiropractor. And my husband was like, okay. And I was like, I want to be a prenatal pediatric chiropractor. And he's like, there's only two problems with that. And I was like, what's that? And he's like, you, you don't like children and you're, <laughs> and pregnancy totally freaks you out. And I was like, yeah, I'm going to get over that. Um, you know, and, um, and so we basically, um, from then on, um, kind of went full, full steam ahead. We were about to start Sherman found out I was too, uh, we were about to start Sherman two months. We were two months away from starting Sherman and I found out I was pregnant. Oh, wow. So we delayed it and started Sherman with a two month old. So we went to chiropractic college uh, started at Sherman with a, with a two month old and a lot. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that's kind of how it started. And the whole time through school, um, we would learn about different things and I would say, okay, yeah, but how does that affect children or what, what do we see in pregnant women? And I just really wanted to kind of own, own oh, that. No. Yeah. Well, I, I, my mom went to chiropractic school with uh, two teens so that's also a lot, but two, a, a two month old, very brave. So. Yeah. <laughs> and, and then, so now with that, um, how did you end up teaching for the ICPA? Well, so, um, how did that happen? So we started, um, we started our practice and, um, we were doing pretty well in practice and my little brother started going to life West and every week I would make uh, massive amounts of food for him and drive it down. Cause we live about an hour away from life West and I would take it down for him. So he didn't have to worry about food while he was in school. Cause that can be a lot. Mm -hmm. And, um, so I took it down and his roommate in chiropractic college was the, the student body president of, um, the school. Mm -hmm. And, um, I started talking to him about my practice and he was like, you know, I would love for you to speak at, um, our like assembly, you know, weekly assembly. Mm -hmm. Um, I get to pick one person a quarter and I was like, yeah, sure. I'd be happy to. So I went and spoke and, um, the, the, my Dean that had been my teacher, um, asked me to start teaching at life West, um, from that conversation. Uh, from that talk. And I was like, I don't want to teach. I have nothing to teach. I don't, you know, and she was like, but like, that's kind of sometimes what makes the best teachers. And I was like, okay, let me think about it. And then I was like, you know, I could really dive into pregnancy care really while studying and understanding like the pathology. Cause it's a pathology class. It's an obstetrical pathology class. And I was like, I could get paid to really study and dive deep into that all while having the philosophy of chiropractic. So mm -hmm. I took that job, started teaching, quickly became obstetrics, gynecology, pediatric pathology, and assisting in the prenatal and pediatric adjusting class. Well, fast forward a few years, and I was asked to speak at the graduation dinner that Life West has the mm -hmm. day before graduation. Uh -huh. And I wrote this whole, whole speech um, comparing pregnancy chiropractic care with um, like going through chiropractic college and how when you start chiropractic college, you're like a little embryo and then you develop into, you know, you get into clinic and now you're a chiropractic fetus and, <laughs> you know, 
And now we're looking at like the birth of these baby chiropractors being born into the chiropractic community. Mm -hmm. And our job as, you know, (laughs) older chiropractors, senior chiropractors is to foster and nurture them so that they have the care. And, you know, so it was a really cool speech. I was really excited about it. And it mixed birth, chiropractic and philosophy all together. Right. And, and I am about five minutes away from starting, you know, the, uh, the dinner and Jeannie Ohm walks in and sits down right next to me. And I'm like, oh my God. Right. Like this is Jeannie Ohm. The only person that I can think of that loves chiropractic pregnancy and like all of that world together more than I do is probably Jeannie. And I was like, oh gosh, what it like, you know, and I started like getting really nervous. And my husband was like, just tell your story, just tell your story. And I was like, okay. And he's like, they invited you to talk. And I was like, all right, I can't think of Jeannie. I have to go up and do this. So I go up there and I start communicating and, um, you know, tell my story. She's laughing the whole time. Cause my husband's right next to her. So he was, you know, hearing her and Anyways, about two weeks later, she Facebook messaged me and said, hey, I really love your style. Um, Would you, you know, would you be open to talk? And I was like, yes, absolutely. So she's like, it's going to be a half an hour call and it ended up being almost two and a half hours. Um, And she ended up asking at the very end, she said, if I were to ask you to teach a class for the ICPA, what would it be? And I said, Ooh, (laughs) you know, and I'm thinking in my, in my mind, I'm like, I would love to teach Webster, but that's her, her class, you know? Um, And I was like, well, what I think is really missing a big gap is really the loss Um, miscarriages, stillborns. Not that I think it's a super fun topic, but um, that as chiropractors, we're going to, we're going to experience that kind of stuff personally, and also within our practices. And so how do we um, support those families? Because um, it's not only about the, the the really exciting, fun times of practice, but really like being into the lows with our chiropractor, or, you know, with our patients right. or practice members. And, right. Um, and so she said, I think that's, you know, that's, I'm going to have to think about that. That's a heavy, heavy class. And I was like, yeah. Um, and so um she said, well, let me just put it this way. At some point, um, you will be teaching for the ICPA. Wow. And I was like, okay. And she's like, it's not going to be tomorrow, but you will be teaching for the ICPA. And I was like, oh my gosh, you know, like so excited. Um, and then about six months later, she passed away. And I was like, devastated because that's a major loss for the chiropractic world. Right. Um also like thinking like, oh my gosh, like, you know, I was so excited, like selfishly. I mean, I was so excited to teach, but like, also how can I help? And so I reached out to the ICPA and I said, I'm so sorry to hear about Jeannie. Let me know if there's any way that I can help because I had been teaching, um, you know, kind of not Webster, but we had been teaching the Webster technique in the adjusting class at Life West. Oh, right. um, and so I said, you know, if if there's any way that I can help, let me know. Mm-hmm. And uh, Justin wrote back to me and said, you know, actually, I was just going through my mom's stuff and I found um, notes from when she interviewed you. And I was like, I didn't know it was an interview. <laughs> 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 Um, and so I was like, okay. And he was like, I would love to continue the conversation. Um, you know, let's talk more about it. And so, um, I developed the, the class, um, navigating the highs and lows in a perinatal practice, uh, that was really kind of focused on the prenatal, um, loss, uh, perinatal mood, anxiety disorders, stillborn miscarriage, that kind of stuff. Um, and presented it to him and he let me start teaching it. So in, February of 2021, um, I started teaching a four hour class with the ICPA and then that's kind of built. Um, and then last year, Justin asked me if I would also, um, start teaching Webster so we could get Webster more, um, basically not have it be one person teaching it, but more people teaching it 
um, around different parts of the country and the world and, you know, have a bigger impact. And um, I was very happy to kind of step into that role. Wow, that, that all sounds really exciting. So, yeah. and, and is that what you teach now or do you teach more than, or what do you teach, I should say? <laughs> Uh, with the ICPA? Yeah. <laughs> um, so with the ICPA, I am teaching, I'm currently teaching two classes. I teach um, the Webster Webster Technique class, the Webster certification. And then I also, which is a 13 hour um, weekend course. And then I also teach the highs and lows of a perinatal practice, which is a four hour online class. Excellent. Excellent. So, you know, while we're on the topic, why is the ICPA important? Oh man, <laughs> why is it important? Um, I think the ICPA is important one uh, because it does create a community of chiropractors who are um, in some ways like-minded, but also we're all very different as chiropractors. Um, and I think that that's one of the beauties of chiropractic, but also one of the hindrances, right? Because you can go to a chiropractor and the public doesn't necessarily know what to expect. And right. I think the biggest thing that we as chiropractors can do is have our philosophy, right? right. And um, which I think is like, you know, mile high this, this past year was the first time I had ever attended. And it was so amazing to have so many different chiropractors like there and all like in it for the philosophy, like for the right reasons, you know? And That's, our- I, I love you saying that because we put <laughs> so much energy into that being the case. Yeah. And that's really what it was. I mean, you know, it was my first time going and I just thought it was like, holy cow, like I, I'm not a network doc. Um, I've never even, I've never even had network care, um, <laughs> but, but, but it's like, I just, I really appreciated because at the end of it, it's like, that's not really, it's not a technique driven seminar. It's really about the philosophy of chiropractic. And, and that was really beautiful to see. Um, and I think I- ICPA is very similar in that is it's not necessarily about the technique that you do, but it's more about the philosophy of like every man, woman and child deserves to be under chiropractic care, regardless of the presence or absence of symptoms, because we know that chiropractic helps with brain function. And how cool is it that we can start with the mom in pregnancy, going through the pregnancy, making sure her body is balanced and, you know, for easement of labor and delivery. Mm -hmm. And then also, you know, hopefully less interventions in labor and delivery. And then babies are born, you know, less subluxated, less stressed, less, you know, uh, more at ease in their own bodies. And we can help facilitate change within their system to help their growth and development be the most optimal that it can be for them. And I think that that's really what's important about the ICPA is you have so many different people who are experts in their field, who are really passionate about the subjects that they're teaching. Um, And yeah, I mean, that's kind of, I think that's why it's really important is um, it creates that community in, in the same way that I think Mile High does. Well, and, and really important thing that you said, it's because when the, the values are around that subluxations are in and of themselves a detriment to one health, right. whether they be an infant or in utero or, you know, older in life. And and that's the, the foundation principle that I know. I mean, I knew Jeannie pretty well. And did many things with her. And I know that was the underlying message of the ICPA. And, you know, that that's when, when people come to Mile High, um, they often are, you know, Elise Rigney, you know, Elise Rigney, I, I believe. Uh-huh. Yeah. She's a good friend of ours. And she, she always refu- re- refers to it as bringing all the camps together. Like, you know, yeah. and, and, and I didn't think of it that way and that wording, but I mean, that really is what it is. If, if you have at your foundation, our principles, and those values, whatever approach you do, you're going to love being there. And and that's the same thing with the ICPA. But, um, you know, because we have enough of uh, people shooting each other as chiropractors, right? You yeah. Know, that's, we don't need more of that. We are, we're, our our, um, our uh, ranks are thin enough as people that are, you know, focused on that and need to make a right. bigger difference. So, yeah. yeah. And on that note, what do you think of the biggest, best thing that 
um, chiropractors do can to support the next generation of chiropractors? The biggest thing that they can do? Yeah. I think... I think getting involved. Um, I think chiropractors getting involved with the schools, um, chiropractors getting involved in perhaps getting interns into their office, um, finding ways to mentor people. Um, if you aren't interested in that, donating, you know, even if you had donated, you know, one adjustment cost a month um, to students, uh, you know, I think the way that you guys did it at Mile High was really awesome. Like you can donate money to get students here because if right. we can get baby chiropractors um, into, <laughs> I'm going to be a little like whatever, but like into the right way to practice, like into the philosophy of chiropractic, because that's really what it's about. Um, if we can foster that and really nurture our baby chiropractors to grow into full functioning adult chiropractors eventually, um, <laughs> I, I think that's embryonic or something. Is that <laughs> yes, exactly. I, I think that that's kind of the best way to handle it because, and, and, and most chiropractors, I mean, you know, hopefully most, ad, you know, grown up chiropractors have more, 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 more money than time. Um, and some have more time than money and that's fine, but somehow donating something of whether it's your time, having chiropractors take on interns. There are so many programs, um, within the chiropractic colleges that allow people to have them come in and intern in your office. And they don't necessarily right. need to be adjusting people um, or working on people, but they're there to really learn and um, see kind of real life because that's the whole, um, it's a whole thing. And then, you know, and then, yeah, donating to causes like the Mile High Fund that allows for you guys to then be able to you know, have, have students be there, um, I think is also really important. Well, yeah, we, <laughs> we have to make a difference together, uh, yeah. and, and pull our attention, our resources, our energy. It's so important. Um, now with that, since you talked about embryonic chiropractors <laughs> or young <laughs> chiropractor students yeah. or new grads, um, you know, they go, there's, some students graduate and they open a practice right off the bat and some uh, want to work for someone else first. How, how can people thrive as associates? Um, so I think thriving as an associate is, is really important. And I think that that's another way that we can help chiropractors. Um, we decided early on in practice that we wanted to hire associates um, and we wanted them to have a thrivable salary. Um, we wanted them to um, to look at the other options because yes, owning your practice can be profitable and it can be really stressful. Um, and so what we do is we pay our, our chiropractors um, a good livable salary that they can you know function off of and live off of. Um, and the longer they're with us, the more money they make. And um, we pay for their malpractice insurance. We pay for um, we pay for vacations. We pay for not like vacation time. Um, they get sick time. They get uh, we pay for all their CE and travel with CE um, meals while they're at CE. We pay for certifications. So all of our chiropractors are on the trajectory. Um, one, everybody has to be Webster certified in our office. Uh, they have to be perinatal certified in our office. And we want them to be CACCP certified um, through the ICPA with the pediatric certification. So we want them to be certified. Um, I'm not... You know, I know some chiropractors that I talk to are like, well, I'm scared that if I pay for that, then they'll go and open their own business. And it's like, my idea is I don't really care if I make somebody a better chiropractor and then they go and be a better chiropractor somewhere else. Like that's fantastic. My goal is to try to make them the best chiropractor that they can be or help facilitate that. And if they want to stay with us, then then they can. We now um, we're paying for their insurance. California, we're required to pay for insurance because of how many people we have. Um, but we pay for their health insurance. We pay for. Um, we started a new program this year where 
we're paying a portion of their student loans off. Mm. Um, and we pay into retirement. So, um, they start off with like a pretty good, you know, a, a, a good salary. And then we're adding all of these things that are also, um, kind of in their total package with us is, is really beneficial as well. Um, and I don't want our chiropractors to stop learning. I, I want all of us to be, um, the most, expert that we can be, mm -hmm. uh, because this isn't like right now, currently I'm the only diplomat in, in my practice. Um, but I would love for all of my chiropractors to be diplomates because it's not just about, you know, how can I look the best and be the most proficient? Uh, because ultimately it's about the goal of our community and, mm -hmm. you know, saving the children through chiropractic, um, and if they can be the best versions of themselves, then I think I've done a pretty good job. Well, I, I would agree. And I, I would hope more doctors of chiropractic that are, oh, you're not older. I'm older, but, <laughs> <laughs> Thank but you. Uh, that are further along in their path from embryonic, you know, yeah. the teen stage that, you know, can, uh, can do that. Yeah. Otherwise, if we don't lift up more chiropractors, we don't, we don't move forward as a profession, or at least our, oh, I don't want to say side, but I'm coming up with that word. You know, our, 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 our side of the profession doesn't. Right. You know? And that, that just hurts, uh, you know, the subluxation, we adjust asymptomatic people, uh, part of the profession, you know, yeah. um, and, and that's not as fun. So, you know, uh, really glad that you're having that much. So, um, you know, it sounds like, uh, so all three offices have a lot of a pediatric focus or they're all a pediatric focus. Yeah. So, um, we're, we're prenatal and pediatric focused, yeah. which if you do your job, right, turns into <laughs> a family, family practice, right. um, you know, and so we joke that often, you know, when when dads come into the practice, for example, we're like, yeah, we're prenatal pediatric, but don't worry, we see regular people also, um, because it's like we don't want to forget about them. And but the reality is, in school, the skeletons that we're learning on, the the people that we're learning how to adjust are 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 male, you know, they're man, they're men, uh -huh. um, and so we 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 do specialize in prenatal pediatric care, but we really are a, a, a family practice. Got it. Yeah. Got it. Now, now I would imagine taking care of kids is pretty fun. Mo most of the time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, cause some people can find practice to be stressful. Right. And Hey, there are stresses of running a business. I don't want to make that. Right. I don't want to lie about that or cover right. that. Oh, going to chiropractic is going to just all be joy and ease, you know? Right. <laughs> yeah. But however, practice should be fun. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Practice should be fun. And I think that that's kind of, yeah, there's definitely, that's my goal is that we want our chiropractors to kind of be um, disillusioned in that way that like we, we kind of hide that not, not like in a sneaky or intentional, like misleading way, but I want them to be able to show up to work, adjust, love on people, um, make differences, and then go home and be with their families and, and not have to bring work home, not have to, um, you know, go through stuff where my husband and I are in the process of like moving right now. And he just opened one of my like backpacks and he found all these like studies that I had like highlighted and circled. And he's like, you're such a nerd. And I was like, yeah, but we're really nerdy in different ways. Cause what excites <laughs> me is like pregnancy and you know, the, the mechanical forces of the uterus and all of that kind of stuff. And my husband is really more into the neurology stuff. And he's like, you know, how many people do you think do this? And I was like, well, I love to learn this stuff so that I can teach my chiropractors so that they're not having to print out these studies and, you know, highlight them and, you know, and I can just reiterate the information and then they learn the information and that, and that's easy. Um, and that's kind of, you know, for me, I want it, I want their, you know, I, I find that fun. I find that fulfilling and I want our chiropractors to, enjoy being in practice. Um, because one of the things that was really hard and one of the reasons I didn't want to become a chiropractor is I watched how hard it was 
for my dad. My dad built his practice. It was like 95% work comp. And then overnight the laws changed and that completely fell through. And so he was, you know, 20 years into practice and had to change how he was practicing. And he had built it to this amazing practice that was really pretty easy. And overnight it was just kind of taken away. Um, so yeah. Yeah, And and the thing that like, look, um, that happens in, in chiropractic. Um, you know, I have a, Look, and they're probably new chiropractors, uh, students, um, and and if we just say it's all rosy, I mean, that's just it's just it's just not the case. Right. There is a lot of fun, and I love practicing. And there are times when things are hard, and <laughs> you know, and um, I've run an office, taught people around the world, and um, put on mile high, and you know, mentor. That's all a lot of work. Yeah. And, you know, your kid, you as a, you as a kid talking, seeing your parent, you know, can see that as, wow, that's not always easy. And then you can realize, well, guess what? That happens in business and all kinds of things. Right. I mean, totally. You know, it's not just <laughs> chiropractic that has, is, right. has business challenges or concerns or ups and downs where everything's great. I mean, and there's a lot of fun and there's yeah. a lot, you know, that's, that's called life, right? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. And 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 new students and new grads shouldn't, you know, don't, they'll tend to think, oh, this is just me, and I'm bad at business. Versus, well, no, it, this happens in business, and you've got to, you know, grow out of it, and also still have fun with it, right? right. Because otherwise, you can become, you know, those chiropractors that um, have uh, buyer's remorse for becoming a chiropractor. You don't right. want, right? Right. So, right. and 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 it's it's not the direction. But if you have people that mentor you and help you thrive and help you find yourself as a chiropractor, then, you know, you can, you can, uh, increase the fun. Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, and then, you know, you, you help people thrive in a membership model from correct. Is that right? Yes. And and can you say anything about that? Cause some people have their doubts about that as a possibility. Yeah. Um, so our membership model, um, is set up in a way that we're coming from the idea that every man, woman, and child deserves to be under chiropractic care, regardless of the presence or absence of symptoms. And so the idea is that we wanted to make chiropractic affordable for the entire family. And so we kind of worked at it from that perspective of like, I grew up in a family of five kids. So, you know, so there were seven of us in total. And if my parents had to pay, you know, I don't know, 50, 60, $70 per visit per person every week, they wouldn't have been able to afford that. And my dad was a freaking chiropractor. So, you know, it's one of those things where, you know, looking at the cost of it, um, how could we make it more accessible and affordable for families? And um, we had, you know, our, our mentor ended up being, uh, Reggie gold. Um, we would call him and email him and be like, Hey, how do we, you know, what do you think about this? What do you think about that? Um, and he had done box on the wall. Um, and so we were like, yeah, the only problem with that is like, nobody carries cash and, (laughs) um, and I don't want a new mom, you know, that, or a mom of four kids to like, be like, oh, I want to go to the chiropractor, but I have to bring cash. So I have to stop off at the ATM or whatever. And so we were like, well, how can we develop something where it's just sort of like paid for? And it's sort of in, it's just part of their monthly expenses and it's not a decision every single month that we're having to make. And so, um, it was right around the time that Netflix was like becoming big and we were in school and we were like, well, what if we did a, like a membership model where people just pay a monthly fee and they can have access to the office. And so we kind of like started with that. And then we were like, okay, how do we make that legal? And so we started really looking, we knew we were going to practice in California. Um, And so we were like, okay, let's read the regulations, the rules, the guidelines. Um, Let's read, you know, and so we were pulling laws and, you know, the regulations and guidelines, we were calling the board being like, okay, how do we make this legal? And they're like, oh, look up this statute, look up this um, rule or regulation, look up, you mm-hmm. know, and they were telling us what to read. They weren't telling us if it was legal or not, because the board is not like super helpful with that kind of stuff. Um, and so we were like, okay, well, how can we, you know, and so for two years, while we were in school, 
our focus, yes, was getting past like, you know, school and boards, but it was also how do we make our membership model legal? And um, so we kind of just started there and just really kind of dove deep into the legality of it and how to make it um, work properly for us. Mm -hmm. And that's what we did. And uh, that's a very good way to go. My, my dad basically had a, a membership-based practice, probably different relative to the 1970s, 80s than yours. But, you know, I remember someone saying something very important to me, which was, you know, could you afford going to yourself? If you had to bring you and your kids, your family and pay your rates, could they do that? And I remember I was really early on in practice and I was like, I said something, I said, it has to be really important, you know, because because it would be a real stretch. He said, yeah, that's the problem. You know, you have to find a way that fits in. And you had a lot of the same mentors as me. So um, we, we are cutting cut from the same. Uh, what's that phrase? Cut from the same cloth. cloth. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, well, I want to thank you so much for being at Mile High. Uh, we heard the pediatric panel was such a hoot. We, I mean, people absolutely loved it. It was, it was, it was a hit people. I, I heard about it for weeks. Um, <laughs> and yeah, I mean, people loved it. And also for taking the time to be at, be on the podcast. I hope you make it back to my high again sometime soon. And we, sure. we crossed paths uh, also before then. So, uh, thank you for all your contributions and, you know, People, we, we do want to have people support the ICPA more. How how can they do that? What are your recommendations, how they could be involved and supportive of the ICPA? Um, I think the biggest thing is just become a member. Uh, become a member, get Webster certified. It's a weekend course. Um, and, you know, it's, it's a weekend course followed by an exam. Um, and the membership and the i you know the webster certification is sort of the stepping stone um with that you get put on to the website with the directory um and and then you can kind of decide really what you want to do there's the webster certification there's the advanced perinatal certification now which is um, several classes focused on like the perinatal aspect, and then you can dive deeper into the CACCP, which is the pediatric certification with the perinatal certification. Um, and so just biggest way is getting involved, um, getting, you know, being a member, um, and then getting certifications so that, so that we know that you're kind of, you know, again, cut from the same cloth, right. Um, that, that you're, you're, you're on the side of, of subluxation and um, really, you know, wellness, family care. Excellent. Excellent. Well, again, thank you for helping, uh, for being part of Mile High, being on this podcast and helping so many chiropractors and your community. You got three offices and 16 chiropractors. You're helping a lot of this people. This is Mile High. Uh, do I want to tell the story or do I want to show the message? You've got a lot of work to do between you know, Mile High. The time there, has right? come where, where, where we can know we have a responsibility uh, again, ethical and more responsibility. We have to do it better in order to move people along down inside out. Make sure and you, you get your mind sure right. You it is not. It is a receiver of thought. Because love is my first technique. It's now time for the show. Keep changing spines, lives, and